All right, ladies and gents, welcome to a very interesting game. First and foremost, we're looking for poles, okay? We wanted to see low ELO poles. We have 750 ELO. And in the blue, we have Codfather, who is playing as the poles. And this is a player from uh, from Iceland, according to AOE2.net. And the Codfather is playing as the poles against Schnitzel von Wagen, or maybe it's Wagen. I, I can't pronounce stuff. I'm sorry. Is that villager bugged inside? Oh, my... He was actually in the house. A pretty crazy start here. Anyways, a Codfather, who again is playing as the Poles, is playing a player who's from Poland. What are the odds of that at 750 ELO? So we've got uh, Schnitzel over here who's playing as the Franks. Uh, not a civilization that really makes you jump out of your seat. Uh, you see a lot of the Franks at low ELO. It's a very good sieve. It has uh, incredible potential with their farm bonus and their forage bonus and their knights. But you could say similar things for the poles. If they farm around their full work, which we might talk about. And there's the full work right there. But there's different strats you can go for with the poles. You get some gold if you mine your stone. I think franks are better overall. But poles, if you play them properly, which is going to leave a lot to be desired, I think, at low elo. But if you play them properly, I think poles could actually be a little better than franks. I think the weakness for poles is when they're up against civilizations that have really good archers. Um, yo, Red, what's going on here, buddy? Just chopping the stragglers? Oh, I see. Okay, so Red doesn't want any more goat in his diet. He's going to go get the rhino. The map is Arabia. It's a really open version of Arabia, so expect it to be punishing for these players. I don't think walling is going to be too easy here. And, uh, Garrison Red. Nice save. Okay. An eventful start for Red over here. Now, what's cool about the full work is it is uh, the size of a farm. You're actually able to place eight farms perfectly around the full work. And it looks very, very satisfying. Uh, another thing is it's 125 wood. It acts as a mill, but then also gives you plus five pop space. So it's the same price as a mill in a house, but it's just one building. You know what I just thought of, guys? So you know how uh, I occasionally do T90 trolls, and I have to win against viewers doing some crazy stuff? What about play as the poles, but you can't make houses? That seems like a really good challenge. So instead of, instead of uh, spending 25 wood for a house, I'd have to spend 125 wood. That would be fun. I think we might do that Monday. Uh, right now, I don't have anything on the schedule, but I think Monday we might do T90 Trolls. I'm wondering how difficult that would be. That You start with 200 wood, right? So you start with 200 wood, you could make the first house, or I guess the full work. And then you would need to immediately go to Straggler Trees. Like, that would be rough. We did a similar challenge before. Uh, with Slav military buildings because you get plus five pop space uh, when you make a military building with Slavs. And a barracks is 175 wood. And that felt impossible, so. Anyways, interesting build over here for Red. Who's got a scout underneath his TC, so he must be scared. He's like, oh no, the Codfather, what an intimidating name. Also, uh, for the sake of the people who might watch this later and didn't see, check this out. This is the Codfather's logo. <laughs> or his avatar image. It's a cod. <laughs> it's a Codfather. Gotta love the internet, man. Gotta love the internet. All right. So, uh, you know, for Red, there's another rhino over here. So Red could be off. Red is currently getting rid of the straggler trees. Chopping a fair amount of wood. For Blue, we haven't seen a lumber camp yet. Uh, not at all. So I'm curious if we'll see that. We have a barracks before a lumber camp. Hey, yay, 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 yay. I guess Blue's like, yeah, you know, I've got the straggler trees, bro. I've got the straggler trees. That's all the wood I need. Which is definitely true, but it's definitely getting less efficient, especially when you chop through these trees, and this is not at all bother me. Good scouting, though. Good scouting. I like that for the Codfather. I'd be scared of the Codfather, too. It's such a great name. So he didn't bring in his rhino yet. I definitely think there's going to be a point. Okay, now he brings in the rhino. That guy's trapped and he might die. 
He's definitely trying to clear up the space around the full work, though, right? So I think he is going to farm around the full work. And you look back over red side, red brawn and rhino number two. It's kind of interesting how both have arguably the best farm bonuses in the game. If you were to rank, and, and don't reference any statistics or Spirit of the Law videos, all right? But if you were to, like, rank your favorite farm bonus saves, what would you say? We've got Slavs. They have the faster farms. But I feel like having the farm upgrades for free is almost feels better than having faster farms. Then you've got Khmer that don't need the drop-all points for the farms. Then you've got Poles. Then you've got Franks. I think I would actually prefer to pick Franks and Poles over Khmer and Slavs. Regardless of the farm rate. And then Tutans, yeah. Cheap Tutan farms, yeah. That feels better than faster farms. Just me, anyways. I don't know if you guys are the same. Ah. Felix says about straggler trees. I know they're inefficient, but I don't like to waste resources, not even in a game. So I take all the wood from it. I think the other thing about straggler trees, and people in the YouTube comments were making fun of me recently. They're like, we finally got T90 to accept that straggler trees are okay. He's like, he's in a state of acceptance now. He doesn't even try and fight it. <laughs> you know, I, I saw those comments. Um, the thing that I've realized about the players who take the stragglers versus the players who don't is that at least at this elo, well, now they both are. I feel like the player who takes the stragglers in Dark Age have less TC idle time. Because I think it's less... Um, it's less of an issue for them to try and do everything else because they just let their villagers on the trees. But if you... Okay, so just to play devil's advocate here. You said you don't like to waste resources, right? Well, if you're if you're walking inefficiently, you are wasting potential resources that you could bring in if you make a lumber camp, right? In theory, it is a waste of time and thus meaning you're not going to collect resources if... You choose the inefficient route. It's not that bad. Don't get me wrong. It's not that bad. I'm just saying. Just something to think about. All right. So lumber camp upgrade on the way. Codfather's over here to eat zebra. He's already eating ostrich on this side. We have stone mining, which also means golden come for the Polish player. And I'm a little disappointed we didn't see Codfather get the farm upgrade because that would be 10% of the farm instantly. And that would be more food on the farm. So that that's disappointing. Also a little confused by two villagers walking back and forth to gold right now. I feel like you definitely don't need that. He's got five on gold, which is like two and a half... Or, sorry, five on stone, which is like two and a half villagers on gold. Whoa, buddy! Okay, double scouts for red. And red's so excited to make scouts. Red uh, got housed. But I like how red is keeping the houses nice and cute. You know, you, you always have to make sure the houses look good. Because you want people to want to live there, you know? More farms for red. Honestly, the food economies are kind of weak for both players right now. It's definitely better off for blue. But blue's banking his food instead of spending it. And blue scout did just run forward and see those stables. He's going to get forging and armor, which I assume is for scouts of his own. He hasn't really produced anything yet. So, T90, do you mean upgrade farms right at the start of Feudal before you start making farms? Yes. And if you don't have a real design build order, the best thing you can do is get your wooden farm upgrade at the beginning of each age. Except for maybe Imp. You know, there's... At that point, you know, it, it depends on a lot of stuff. But let's say you don't have a build order and you're still going Feudal Age with, like, 20, 22 vills or something. Get those upgrades. That's a lot of scouts right there. That's seven, six scouts, but the seventh is over here. <laughs> Codfather's walking long distances for this hunt, man. That's auto scout for red. But, I mean, if blue makes his own scouts, he's going to have the upgrades. He'll have bloodlines, armor, and attack. Those are full feudal age upgrades. But now he doesn't have food for the scouts. That's not good. Scouts aren't going to be that strong. Okay, Lucas says, I'm not going to lie, when I started, I used to build my base as if I were role-playing. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people do that. I think that's cool, man. I, I think, you know, playing the game how you want to play it is important, regardless of winning or losing. 
Okay, so this is a good strategy from Blue, but it is super risky. Blue says, I have all this stone. Let's wall, which is not bad logic, but it's a little late. Here comes Red, ready for the attack. Now, keep an eye on Red's TC idle time throughout this, right? We talk a lot about the low elo meme of not creating bills. He just got housed, so he's got to play the, place the houses perfectly. Let's just keep an eye on his eco as he goes in for this attack, because this is a really important moment of the game. Here he comes. Oh, boy. I have seen games end over less. Blue hasn't reacted yet. Okay, now Blue reacts with the town bell. So these villagers all stop working. He needs food, right? So the town bell means that villagers who probably shouldn't be idled are idled. Good news for Blue is he does have four scouts coming in. But Red is focusing down that one. So I don't think three scouts with these upgrades makes a difference. And Red's... Oh, this is perfect. So you focus down the scouts... And then they have no army to defend. That was such good micro from Red. And now it's just villagers for blue. Red's eco. Well, it's having some problems. But he is killing stuff. Still attacking over here. Still attacking over here. This feels worth it for Red. Again, I've seen games end over less. And Red's double scout opening here has worked out pretty well. Blue throughout this. No spearmen are on the way. Just one stable scouts and... Blue, Blue's just being greedy, right? This is what makes a lot of low elo players. They try and go for a strat, and half the time it doesn't work out. But the other half it does, and then that evens them out around whatever elo they're at. Oh, boy. Oh, red. Oh, my friend. Did he look back? See, see, isn't that brilliant? He looked back home to do the eco stuff, and you can just see the multitasking's not so easy here. So maybe Blue's fine, actually. Maybe blue will be okay. More scouts for red. Good job from red, though. That's how you practice, right? You're going to make some mistakes. You you have to you have to uh, take some risks, you know? Practice the important stuff. I think from here, red should be happy to just go castle age. I don't think you need to make any more scouts. Obviously, microing these scouts can still give you really good value. And I would just say, after you kill this many bills, and you have the opponent rattled like this, just go up. Could be a very quick game here. So apparently people have all these ideas and how they want to play the polls, but it doesn't work out too well. Because <laughs> the previous game... Well, I guess the previous game was a... We had a disconnect, right? We actually had like two similar situations there. A little bit of stress here, I guess, for Blue. Feels like this is just over now with 20 villagers. If there's ever a chance, it there would be a chance with the poles. But red comes in again with two scouts. Woo! Nine villagers have been killed. It's about to be ten. And he's making more scouts. Guys, you see how open this base is? You see how crazy the map is? If you're going to stonewall, stonewall right away. Right? He, he stonewalled the 17 minutes. Stonewall right away, my friend. Otherwise, I'd say make some stuff. Maybe the poles are cursed. I don't know. But I'm really impressed with how Red's played. For 750 elo, this is pretty good. Um, He, he definitely need, need to send villagers to gold when he did. You know, he could optimize it, and he could just stop producing scouts and go up to Castle Age at this point. But you know, if he killed 10 villagers, he's, he's done a much better job than we thought with his build production. For blue, it's it's actually affected him more. He's lost vills, but then not created vills as frequently because of the losses and the stress. And he's just gonna tower everywhere. Oh man! Oh, by the time he's walled, he's gonna be in deep trouble here. Town bell, ding 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 ding. ding. Okay. Red loses his scouts. Blue can breathe again. <sighs> Deep breaths. Deep breaths create villagers. Deep breaths create villagers. He's making scouts. Red's trying to come in with more. Blue's still not completely walled. <laughs> I, I have to hand it to Red. He's really committed here. No blacksmith upgrades either. You'd think at this point you'd maybe consider getting a few upgrades. But uh, double stables worked out. Still hoping to get the walls down in time. 
Best case scenario for blue, these walls complete. And then blue can make... He just deleted a hole! So he could send the spearmen out. I hope the scouts don't run in there. The scouts could just run right in. Uh-oh. Quick wall, blue. Come on, buddy. You can do it. I know you can. You can do it. I believe in you. Ah! Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Villager number 11. <laughs> Blue still hasn't created bills. He's just completely frozen. He's so anxious. And oh my god, look at Red. He comes in again. He could get the next villager. What a nerd, man. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. It's easy to make a scout rush look good when the opponent tries to stonewall an open map and is very late with it. Like, it, the scouts should do what they're doing. But also, it's not easy to execute consistently in Age of Empires. And he's done a good job. Anyways, he will finally lose his units here. And let's look at the worker efficiency last minute. 20% for blue. 20% when he's got 18 vils. Codfather. He's probably upset to know that the farms are a plenty for the opponent. Uh, who forgot to make a blacksmith. A little sloppy there. Stable and blacksmith will be two buildings that Schnitzel needs to go up to the next age. Sure not Smurf, question mark? No, it's not Smurf. He's got seven minutes of TC idle time. Again, like, yes, there's a difference between these two players. But if you think about the way Blue opens, he went stone walls at 18 minutes. For 750 ELO, you're definitely going to have some rushes here or there. If you would have stonewalled it, like, when he could at 11 minutes, then maybe it happens and more scouts come in. Oh, man, Blue would be must be frustrated right now. Now, Blue also could counter... And blue is on the way to Castle Age. So, but I mean, 17 vils. 17 vils is so low. If he had vils on stone and gold, I'd say, okay, maybe he can get a castle. Maybe make some knights. I have to say, Red's farms are incredible. Like, the mill... Uh, he's showing the poles how it's done here, right? There's no gaps next to the mills. No gaps next to the TC. All right, now he reacts. <laughs> Not everyone is a smurf if they don't die in Dark Age to abort, yeah. Well, you guys know how it is, right? Regardless of your elo, this game can snowball on you really hard. So it's so easy to look good when you get as far ahead as red has. And it's so easy to look bad when you're as far behind as blue is right now. Okay, so red is a little concerned about this. He's starting to make some spears. And then he's also going to make some scouts. He'll be in Castle Age in about 20 seconds. And Blue's just desperate to get a Vil kill at this point. Okay, very, uh, very hectic for the people right now. Trying to get into the TC. But uh, this should be dealt with. And Blue, again, desperate, right? So he runs in towards the TC. And Blue afford anything. Hey, now he's creating Vils. By the way, there's a hole here. <laughs> there's a hole. Okay, red clears up this threat. It's going to clear up this threat. You see how long it's taking for red to clear this up, though? I think both players really get stressed with the aggression. I don't necessarily agree with this statement, but I've had a lot of viewers tell me that aggression first wins at low elo. I think it's it's not quite that simple, but... Red's got a big lead. And now he's stressed. Now he's not creating vills. Now he's got idols. Now I can lose that villager, lose to the vill. Red doesn't have loom? Well, that, what? Not having loom and doing everything else so well? Also, random blue villager, hello. Ay, 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 ay. Well, we've got pikemen now for blue. He's got three spears. I'm not sure if that's worth it. Especially since two of these are weak. Um... Looks like he's going back to stone now. He's still going to try. Try being the, the key word here. Ever since being attacked, Red is completely freaked. Like, stopped creating vills for a bit. Now he's going to send a bunch of vills to stone. But he didn't like the mining camp. <laughs> he deleted the mining camp. Wait, what? Did you not like that mining camp? I'm... Oh, who needs a mining camp when you can have a TC? I see. Okay. Place the TC instead. Jaren says, uh, 850 ELO here. I resign when I get rushed because I know I'm dead. 
You're not, though. Don't resign every time you're rushed. It's not necessarily true. Because we, we see it all the time, right? People who rush oftentimes aren't focused at their own economy. So your priority if you're getting rushed should be make sure you're still creating villagers. Um, and then obviously still work in defense. But that's the big thing is people think defense first and they don't think about still creating vills. I think you'd be surprised. You get to like 1100 elo, then people might be able to scout rush a bit more with more eco focus. All right. I gotta say at 800 elo, there's so many macro build orders who just full wall fast and fast attack is ineffective. I tend to rush and my eco is pretty bad. I always lose if enemy walls early and just up and with me. Yep, exactly, Tony. So, the lesson learned here for blue is if you're gonna wall with no military, you don't wait until the 18th minute to stonewall. Like, this strat would have been great, but he started to wall seven minutes after he was in feudal. He gave the enemy time. Like, that rush from red was a good rush, but I could easily have seen a world where, like, like you mentioned, you know, there ends up being a lot of military, and then it's uh and then they run into walls. Here comes Pikeman again. No loom on the Vills. So Pikeman will shred Vills. And Pikeman also have good upgrades here. And Red has no upgrades. Don't tell me Red's gonna lose this game. Dude, please don't lose this game, Red. You Okay, he will push this back. Good job, good job, good job. The sheer numbers. Still though, it feels like slightly manageable for blue if he were to come in with like 10 pikemen because if red doesn't pull away red's gonna lose 15 vills and that's the difference granted red does have a second tc now okay here's something being built oh another stone wall okay remember poles have tremendous ability to come back it also makes me very sad that when you have an amazing farm bonus with the poles, you're not fully farming around the full work, and we don't have the farm upgrades. I think it's a big thing you need to focus on here. Wow, Red's got lots of res. Red just seems to want to defend now. I think with like the reason Franks are such a perfect sieve is now you just you're ahead, you just drop cheap castles. Castle here would be great. Castle here would be great. Castle here, just castles. Um. Like, any time Franks are in a vulnerable position, because they, they don't make army, they just have castles, and their eco is protected. And they end up being pretty strong. Where are these vills going right now? Um, it seems like it was intentional, right? Where is he going? Sending two villagers to the northern corner... If I had to guess, I would say maybe for a TC <laughs> with Legend of Corner Boy Part 2. Um, kind of feels like it's like he senses it's like these. Oh, my God. You know what it is? It's like Romeo and Juliet situation. And their families don't like the fact that they're together. And so they're running away. They've, they've left. They've gone to foreign lands. Not the exact story, but you know what I mean. Uh, okay, Pikeman now coming in. Pikeman have arson, which does not help against units, but it does help against the buildings here. And Red does have a castle. And he's trying to drop a castle on Blue's face! And Blue's making Pikeman here, and he doesn't have loom! Red, if you lose this game, I lose my mind. I think uh, he does have enough villagers to complete this on the bright side. Meanwhile, everything's falling apart at home. Uh, Romeo and Juliet are happy not to be here because they hear that there's a castle going up. Um, and Blue, I mean, to be honest, Blue's been really far behind, right? So, I mean, he's been trying well, but in the end, Red gets the castle up. and Now Red can make throwing Axemen, and Axemen are a perfect counter to Pikes. Meanwhile, his eco is getting torn to bits by Pikeman. And he now doesn't have a building at home to make anything to deal with this. As he's streaming out knights to their death against the Pikeman. Because he's looking at this. Meanwhile, these two villagers, they don't actually have wood to do anything. So they're just kind of there. And Red continues to send knights to their death to the Pikeman. Um... 
kind of feels like Red doesn't know what to do with them. I think Red is waiting for stone for another castle. That's what I think. I think he wants to drop two castles here. Okay, now he's going to make Axemen. There we go. So do you remember that point of the game where, again, people were like, oh, Red's clearly a better player, blah. Now you start to see the cracks in the armor, right? He had a really good job. He did a really good job when he was in control. But this easily could have lost him the game. If there was like three knights here for Codfather as well as three pikemen, I don't know if that castle ever goes up. Ting, 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 ting. Blue still one TC. Really needs to make houses right now. Doesn't have the pop space. Kind of needs a second lumber camp here. Doesn't have the wood. Because he's making rams. Uh, as we see another castle. Where are the rams coming from though? Oh, there. Okay. Yep, two castles is really good. And then you can just mine his stone. And then you've got Axemen against Pikemen. So you're, you're good. The only area you're not really good right now, if you're red, is at home. But Pikemen can't take out TCs. So. Blue wants to control the farmland. Blue is the score lead. Which must be so confusing for him. But yeah, Axemen do really well against Siege. So I think Blue is... I think this is only going to get worse for Blue. I think the Rams will go down. And then I think eventually we'll see red break in, and red will probably drop even more castles. The red could always do with a defensive castle. Or farms for red. He says, okay, forget about these farms. We've lost those lands. And now he's in. Murder holes! <laughs> you know, just in case. Just in case as the axemen run into Blue's Town. The precious farmers are being raided. The two villagers in the north have been forgotten. And, uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's probably over. Yeah, Maximus, going... Trying to ram down Frank Castles in Castle Age is not so good. Um, even... Like, Axemen, even without many upgrades, do pretty well against rams. Because Castle Age rams are kind of weak as is against castles, so... No, meanwhile, we have the very effective, very common Pikeman Rush at Red's TC. As Red is getting Ballistics... And Red is probably microing on the front. He has completely forgotten about his eco. What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? Okay, Red realizes, but not before he dips down to 48 villagers. It's now 48 to 42. Uh... <laughs> Pikeman just killed a lot of bills. Okay. That said, Blue has a lot of idols right now. <laughs> so his villagers aren't exactly working. <laughs> you gotta love low elo man these players will do enough to get victories and then just find any creative way to throw it away <laughs> like i mean i know it's it's probably super fun for red because he's living life on the edge and that's that's what it's all about but he really upon building these forward castles left himself so exposed at home and just wasn't able to re remember even just five Axemen here. Like, five Axemen, and then this all gets cleared up. But nope, he's got all the Axemen here instead. Yeah, Blue Blue has done a poor job at expanding. Still no Lumber Camp over here. Like, there's just so many things. If you look at the eco still, Blue's eco has just been so far behind. And I think, you know, he wants to leave this place now. With 45 villagers versus 48, there is kind of a chance, right? I'll see, he's going to get the stone mining upgrade right now. So we can get as much stone and gold as possible. I don't know, though. He'd have to fully abandon his farms. I guess at this point, I'd like to see Red, who will probably try and drop a castle, but... I'd kind of like to see Red get more Axemen upgrades and maybe even get Arson. Still, all the villagers are idle here. Like... It's like the game has slowed down, you know? The world used to be moving so fast, and now Red is just shredding houses with Axemen. That's a peace... It's a very peaceful land here. Or I shouldn't say peaceful. But you know what I mean. There's not a lot of action. You know, just... People's houses going down, so they have nowhere to live. That's... That's peaceful. Like, Red! Dude! Don't lose more vills. Blue's going to take the vill lead. Blue is going to take the vill lead. I'm telling you, if Blue can escape to the left right now, okay? 
Get these vills out of here and go down here. He is TCing the north, okay? <laughs> he finally got the resources. I don't know why you wouldn't just TC with all these vills somewhere. Maybe it's because of the hills. We've seen crazier things today. And if you didn't see the Tootin v Tootin match, that's going to be hitting YouTube. It is an epic game. But like Red needs to realize that, hey, you know, maybe I shouldn't be losing so much to Pikeman. As I just like, like, <laughs> like, how tunnel vision is red right now that this can happen? <laughs> One villager. He's very tunnel vision. This is what his screen looks like right now. This is what he's doing. Like, oh yeah, let's kill the tower next. Oh yeah, let's go. He did just use the market to go imp, which is good. He's gonna shred the tower, which is great. Okay. You can always make trebs. Blue needs houses, so they're they've got they're getting to work over here. Again, I I question the lack of urgency, I guess, as the tower completes. Um you know, you do have these vills. I'm thinking maybe scrambling down the houses instead of being so painfully casual with just one vill would help a little bit. Uh, blue a little distracted. Tower in the front, the counterattacks going down, and now He's forgotten about these poor villagers, and yeah, red has military, red's eco is weak, but stronger, and red can make trebs, so. I just want to see blue go for a YOLO, oh, look, a TC. I want to see blue go for a YOLO castle right in red's base or something, like right here. It'd be so epic. Overall, though, fun game. Okay, chat, t what's your ELO? And do you feel like you have a tendency to throw games when you're winning? Yes or no? I think it's such a common trait. Like this Age of Empires, you have to do so many things right in a row. And, uh, you know, keep on top of things. To the point where I think that if you're not in like the top 1,000, you're, you're just, if you take a lead, you can lose it in so many different ways. 1300, I don't throw because I never win. 900, yes. 900, I tend to throw an imp. Okay, 1200 and yes. Maybe it's not 750. Like maybe uh, 1000 and up. It tends to be easier for people to throw. Because, you know, like someone at 750 falls super far behind. They have to do a lot, you know, to come back, but. 1100 and no, all my losses are either Civ losses or bad map gens, of course. Oh, that's true. It's true. It's definitely a, it was definitely a Civ win for the enemy. Okay. Um, well, we have two on food for blue who's losing, and we have zero on food for red who's winning. Someone explain that to me. Uh, this game definitely feels over. Blue is not wanting to accept that it's over. And red is not really wanting to finish the game. No trebs yet? <laughs> uh, but farmer's back to work. That's good to see. As we have a very even 100 kills, 100 deaths right now. Not bad, not bad, not bad. If blue would have scrambled up the TCs and all the corners over the last 15 minutes, I truthfully believe blue could have come back in this game. Like, again, these villagers would should have never been there. You get over here, drop a TC. You could have dropped the other TCs, maybe had a TC here. And then the vill count, I think, would be even. Because red just completely froze. Still, red's not making anything to hunt this down. Is there a chance? Is there a chance? Because, like... Red just seems to be enjoying the ride right now. I've got this. Watch him Watch him heal up his axemen and his castles. I'm telling you, if... Like, red's got these castles here that control nothing of importance now. If blue can get enough eco rolling and just start raiding with light cap, just streaming light cap, stay in castle age, light cap, all into red's eco, I think red might get overwhelmed. And red's going, red's going to the south. There's nothing in the south. Oh my god, what is happening? What is happening? Again, imagine if blue would have actually left earlier, if he would have accepted his fate a little earlier and tried this. The reboom is on, and no, people are like, fast forward, you know, I didn't want to do more games. This game is even, yes, no, no, this is a game, I'm telling you. 
This is a game because red is allowing it to be a game and because blue is making it a game. And he's making a castle here. It's 36 villagers versus 43. This is the army for red. And also, um... What the? Dude. Re what? <laughs> Six lumber camps? Oh, I guess it's five. That's a new one. Um... Uh, he forgot to make a mill, I guess, for his farm, so he's going to do that. Okay, kind of making some more vills, so he's going to do that. And then he has the most efficient wood chopping he could think of, as he still hasn't really found any of the new areas, as he has checked the incorrect corner here. And he's like, well, he must be on the other side, so let's break through the wall. <laughs> Come on, Blue. Get to farming, bro. Get to farming. I think raiding is the way you do it here. But he needs to have a bit more food. And uh, he needs to have... I think what would be awesome is the unique tech. I forget how much it costs, but the slotch, the privilege or whatever, means the Polish Knights cost 60% less gold. But the priority here is get putting all that wood into farms, and you want to put it around full works. And, oh, he still doesn't even have horse collar. That's so sad. Like, guys, it almost looks like Red thinks that Blue is refusing to resign. He's like, yeah, this guy's dead. So I'm just going to, like, take my time here and have some fun with it. But I think there's still a chance for Blue if Red doesn't clamp down on him. Yeah, blue did get ballistics. We don't have any cavalier, right? We don't have many blacksmith upgrades. He's just using the axeman to take out walls. Oh, this is going to be the most embarrassing schnitzel loss ever. Like, if he, if he loses this and he finds out about it, he's not going to be happy. So be quiet, okay? Again, that unique tech. Let's see. Okay, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna stonewall. Honestly, you know what? It probably won't be worse than the other stonewalls you went for. Red will find the stonewall and just spend all game destroying that. That's the strat. The more stonewalls you add, the, the more villagers Red won't kill. Um, I just like, I got this game, man. I'm such a god. Oh my goodness. I'm so good. And he probably sees Blue's Pikeman and he's like, ah, he's got nothing. And there's the upgrade. That's the upgrade. That's the upgrade. The privilege upgrade. I can't say that. Zlatcha. That gives, uh, that means the knights for the poles are minus 20% gold. As it stands, Red does not have any Castle Age upgrades on his, uh, out of his blacksmith. So. Blue does. Blue's got plus two attack. He could also get plus two armor. Blue, please, you want to start attacking soon here. Also, you're, it looks cool and everything, but farming around the castle is not a part of the Polish bonus, my friends. I know it looks amazing, but uh, that is a lot of inefficient farming right there. So please, I would suggest, at least for my sanity, making a full work, a.k.a. your mill, next to your farms. He got the unique tech. He might be tempted to go imp. Red now has found part of his economy. But still, from what Red sees, he's thinking this blue guy won't resign. He's got no chance. And while I still think Red should win this game, if he continues to just, like, kind of twiddle his thumbs here, I do believe it's maybe possible for the Codfather. Okay, this is where it gets real, though. This is where it gets real. Okay, so we have the armor. We have, we have Codfather now, obviously in the north. Now, this is Red's point of view. What he won't see is the farms. That's a spectating thing, right? But he went to make a monastery, and now he'll see Wall. So now this gets interesting. Mind you, Red has one on food, as he's making a wonder! He's making a wonder! So, hold on. He's got 53, make it 55 bills making a wonder. So he's got 22 villagers working. And I'm telling you guys, if Blue makes enough knights in Obuk and comes in, Red is going to get caught with his pants down, and he's going to get completely screwed here. Red thinks he's got this game won, 
Though he's making a wonder to completely flex. You cannot actually win with a wonder. A wonder is a building you can play with with community game settings and whatnot. A thousand wood, a thousand stone, a thousand gold to make this. And it builds very slowly. Again, he figures he's got him here. He figures he's got the win, but blue wait, dude. No, 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 no. Don't fight here. Please don't fight here. This is this is a great way to throw. I mean, with those upgrades, it's still going to be a decent fight. But imagine if he was a little more patient. He, of course, does not get a wonder notification. Okay. So, uh, uh, considering the number differences there, it honestly was not a bad fight. But dude, if you get that upgrade, if you get Salacha or whatever it is, you need to have more than one stable here. You've got to have more. Red just still figures, yeah, I got this game. Thinking about that relic, thinking about this relic. Wonders at 60%. Now, I have done this. Some people might say, oh, this is disrespect. I have done this in games. Uh, I will make wonders if people aren't resigning. But I also am trying to actively kill them all the time. So it's it's a sign of where, you know, if your opponent ends the game and they see you made a wonder, they're like, yeah, maybe I should have resigned 20 minutes ago. Um, but in this case, Red's truly not making a lot, right? Like, he's made a treb in Imp and Monks. That's it. Yeah, there was one instance where I went for two wonders. Um, and the wonders got denied. And uh, I still ended up winning the game. <laughs> but uh, there were a few instances where maybe I made them too early. But uh, I'm just saying I can relate to that aspect. Because now all these villagers can go back to work. That is a beautiful wonder. I love this wonder. The French wonder is gorgeous. Okay... Is going for a mangonel now. Probably not the best time to go for fortified wall blue. And blue, I really believed in you, buddy. I really believed in you. Where are the night numbers? One stable hurts so much. I wanted like five stables in full production. You could do it still. Mangonels actually don't do too much to Axemen. I could see why you would think that they do, but they don't. And I don't know if Red even tried that, but... There you go. And now, oh, now he runs through the choke point. Oh, and the monk's going to get a conversion. Oh. Oh. Well, Red's got his wonder. And I think he's going to get his victory here. The Axemen still don't have a lot of upgrades, but Blue... Like, again, look at the resources, man. He, he could do this. If he continues to produce. He re-walls it now. And the Manganel gets a really good shot and actually could get another one. Ooh, it's six military versus eight right now. Okay. The villagers also aren't working. So you're saying there's a chance. Blue, oh God, the treb. <laughs> Blue, come on, you can do this. You can do this. There's an Axeman inside your walls though. You might want to sort that out. He's on his way to him. From the northernmost TC, we have Corner Boy part two. Let's go. Uh, villagers fight back. Oba comes in here to save the day. 55 villagers for 75 reds. Villagers now finding jobs again. But it's like the job market's really awkward right now. There's too many people without jobs and there's not enough jobs. And it's, it's a stressful time. So red decides, you know what? I think we really need to spend our resources now. So what are we going to do? We're going to get elite throwing axemen. You like the timing on that? It's just a little bit weird. You know, just, just like a little bit. You know, let's just like lose all this unit and then upgrade it after when we don't have any more. That's, uh, that's odd. And he's like, I've got the time here. We're good. I've definitely got the time. So let's also go Cavalier. Let's finish this guy off. And so now he's going for stables, which is obviously great, but he doesn't have the upgrades yet. Also, wonders don't fire arrows like a castle does something to remember here as blue is looking for damage and he's going where he remembers and if he just sees some villagers he's gonna find reward I swear to you red's gonna lose this game if blue can make more than one freaking stable blue forget masonry please make more than one stable you're gonna win you are gonna win like red red has zero on gold he's got 18 on food so he's going to make enough knights where he can compete and kill blue. But blue has the unique tech 
and blue should be able to make more of them. It's just the lack of stables just makes me... I'm so invested in this. It's making me lose my mind right now. As Red says, it's a great time to get Loom. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that upgrade. Loom, Loom, Loom. I want you in my room, I guess. I don't know. Blue has given Red every opportunity to finish this game. But Red has given Blue every opportunity to come back. You ever watch sports? And, like, they're like, uh, uh... So, uh, what's the difference gonna be there, Harry? And Harry's like, well, it really comes down to who wants the game the most. Who wants to win the most today is gonna get the W. Do you ever hear that stuff? As if, like, professional athletes would just, like, not want to win. It's a bit, it's the worst bit of commentary you'll ever hear in sports. But anyways, it's the opposite here. It's like, well, it's whoever doesn't want to win the most, I think, that's gonna decide it. It's like both players have been told by their parents that they have one more game to play for the day. And they want to make sure that game goes on as long as possible. That's what we have here. I want Red to lose because he's been so greedy and toying around with his opponent. But I want Blue to lose because he won't make more than one stable. If both players disconnect right now, I would actually rejoice. No, I'm kidding. That's that's rude. I'm, that's a joke. I want this game to, to conclude, but I'm like... I thought this game was over. I, You know, emotionally, I've just... I kind of accepted that, and now I'm... Then I was all about the comeback, and now I just want to see that Unique Tech get some value here with crazy production. Blue does have two stables. That's true. <laughs> Red with the castle wall. It's not about... It's not about winning. It's about sending a message. Okay, I want Red to win again. Red has four relics, by the way. Could be five here in a second. You actually could see the blues down here. <laughs> you must have seen some of my videos. The castle wall. Okay, blue is producing out of two stables. He's got 13 cavalier in Q. Again, I kind of feel like with his cavalier numbers and upgrades... I think he could be fine here. He's going to have to delete some of his wall if he wants to engage. The timing on this is crucial. Okay, he's going to run through the hole that Red's making? Is that the plan, or is he running... What? Okay. He's running through the gate. I mean, the castle number one goes up for Red, right? Uh, however, the castle fire, while it will help, won't help immensely. Because he doesn't have a lot of upgrades. And Blue could make traps. If he had the resources, he could make traps. But he... Man, the farms, you know, he's walking so long to drop off the food. He's only got two stables for the Cavalier. Yet I still maintain this is winnable. <gasps> I still maintain this is winnable. For Blue. Now, I would have preferred to see these stables at home. That would be really cool. And he's actually having an issue now is that he doesn't actually have gold anymore. But he is going to send a lot of units right into Red's Woodyco, and Red's about to lose all those vills. Meanwhile, Red's feeling like he got over here, and Red has one treb. I feel like Red might send all of his army away from here to deal with this when he starts to hear the attacks. And Blue's going to send these villagers right back to Stone. So yeah, technically, these are the only gold miners right now for Blue. It's 90 pop versus 93 right now, my friends. And does Blue have a market? I would really like to see him maybe sell some re- He's rebooming! He's adding a TC! Oh, if only he had the gold, though. If only he had that gold. If he could get Vils there. Hey, here come the Cavalier. Red's getting Paladin, which is so expensive, and he's going to lose all of Zaxman right now. Guys. Guys. Red's thrown. Blue can do this. I'm telling you. All the Axemen go down. Okay, just one left. No, no, no. All the Axemen go down. Red has completely thrown this game. He's getting Paladin. He is sending more units over here. Paladin's very strong. But we're gonna... <laughs> no, no, please, don't. Okay, all right. You know what? Just live your dream. Blue's gonna drop a castle there. Uh, that'll most likely be denied. Though he is taking a really good fight because a lot of Red's units are not really engaging. And they're trickling in one by one. 
Uh, meanwhile, TC will go down for blue. Villagers are very scared. They're hiding inside the TC. Blue seems trapped and is probably focused on this. I I'm concerned that red won't have many cavalier when he actually gets the paladin completed here. He's got the castles. But does he really have good eco right now? I don't think so. The wonders going down. This, of course... It, it, if anything, will just make Red panic. This lady's like, I left my purse in there. Let me in, you know. I don't know what the Cavalier are upset about. Um, Tony, if Blue could just get Vils to... Oh my god, he's taking the gold. He's actually taking the gold. The sneaky guy's taking the gold right now. Where are you? <laughs> oh god, no. No, 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 no. Where are they going? Okay. Blue... Please make a full work next to your farms. Get a farm upgrade and make more stables. Those things right there. That's all I ask of you. Red? I don't even know what to say, buddy. I don't even know what to say. All, all I want to say is if you end up watching this, thank you for entertaining us, okay? Um, I know that this might be embarrassing for you if you end up losing this game. But uh, you're clearly were having fun. And I hope that if you do embarrass yourself here, that it won't be too bad, okay? He's bringing his trebs back now. Now, I mean, look at this. Blue has a castle, and he sees three castles here, and he also has walls. And he hasn't made a single treb. Like, that's just asking to, for trebs, I think. Um, but yeah, anyways, here come the paladins, here come the trebs, so Blue is going to lose this. And again, like, which player wants to win the least that's the question we're asking here and you have red forgetting that you know those trebuchets might need to be protected here and blue's hopping into the castle and this could be trebs down for red he is making more of them but he's running out of resources and the castle will stand now paladin did run in blue has tons of vills blue just lacks the military Please make more stables. Please. Please, 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 please. Codfather, bro. Your name's incredible. I'm gonna show... Look, look at it. This is the face of a guy who needs to make more stables. Please make more production buildings. Please. I need it. I need it. Also, again, could sell some of that wood, sell some of that food. You could... You could do so much with those resources. You know, you could make hussars. Uh, something we haven't talked about is the pole hussars and how good they are. You just spam. But in order to spam, you need stables. That's a catfish, actually. It it honestly it could be a it could be a goldfish at this point. It should be a goldfish because he forgot to make stables. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a goldfish. He's got the eco setup he needs. He's on gold now. He's got the resources to make the cavalier. It's so cheap. He's got red distracted and fixated. He's making a tower here. But if only he could... Oh, he's made a third stable. Oh my god. He's made a third stable and a treb. This is getting serious now. But also, red has three trebs. And he's starting to push in. Blue hasn't produced because of the stress of the situation. He doesn't have a lot of stone to repair his castle. He's still got army over here, by the way. He could completely Shrek Red in multiple areas right here in the middle of our screens. Oh my god, and Blue is gonna get housed. Blue is gonna get housed. And what I'd love to see from Red, and it might actually force Blue out of the game, is I'd love to see him drop a castle right in this back corner here. Almost right where Blue had his own castle. And now, Blue has... 30 units queued, but he doesn't have production space. Oh, what a stressful game. Guys, if he notices, like if he thinks in the moment to look back over here and attacks anything, he'll kill like 40 vils. But if blue is able to run in throughout this time, blue will kill like 40 vils. What is this game? This is, this is everything for blue. He needs this right now. If anything, Blue needs to lose a couple of vills just so he can make more military. That's that's the thing. Okay, he's making more houses over here, which is definitely a life changer. Um, that's that's gonna take some time, but it's a life changer. 
We have winged husks are on the way. I like to see it. Winged husks are on the way. Uh, a treb now on the way for red to deal with the castle and or the tower. The tower's actually done a lot of damage. Quite a few farmers have gone down. And this also means that this gives blue time to pop up in this area. Out of two stables. I'll take it. Red thought he had this game. He thinks there's no military here. This is the time for blue to say surprise, buddy. And this is your moment, blue. Snipe the trebs. Snipe the trebs and you've won. Snipe the trebs and you've won. I promise you. The game is over if you snipe the trebs. You can do this. Just snipe the trebs. Oh, codfather. Oh, codfather. Oh, codfather. Snipe the trebs. Okay. He forgot he has units in there. I think he forgot. He wasn't waiting for a rainy day. He genuinely forgot. Okay, so he loses the castle, which means he could get pop locked again. However, now he's like, oh, wow, we got a lot of military. That's pretty convenient because there's trebs here. So here he comes. Both players want to win. Both players just as stressed. Both players making some pretty glaring mistakes. This is Loey the Legends. The players are not perfect. They've got passion. And they don't have stables. We have Trebs going down. Red now freaking out. Red's like, oh god, oh god, thanks god it's not a Tuesday. Because if T90 was casting this, this would be embarrassing. Only it's Thursday this week and uh, we switched the schedule. 35 units in queue right now for Codfather. But he doesn't have a castle. Which means... Ah! They're sharing the gold! They're even sharing the gold. I don't even think they have any clue. There's too many things to focus on. But what's crazy is Blue can't actually make Trebs now to take out the castle wall. So he feels like he can't even run out of here with this army. Also, with all these farms, we've got 36 farms. We have one full work. One. <laughs> with no farm upgrades, man. Imagine how much food he'd have and how much wood he'd have if he got even horse color. Back come the Axemen. We got more stables here for Blue. I really hope these guys chat in some way. Like, oh my goodness. But guys, I think Red's dead. I think Red's dead and there's no redemption. That's what I think. Unless he can somehow get a convincing army push to go back here. No, don't go in with one ram. Don't, no, no, no. Wait it out, buddy. Against three castles, please don't go in with one ram. Think about it. You want this. You earned this, okay? You deserve this victory. You deserve it after everything you've been through. Maybe he's just set the gather point there. Okay, all right. That's fine. Um, still spamming Hussars. He doesn't have the other unique tech for the Hussars, which would give them some trample damage, but I think just the Hussars alone will, stake, will still take out Axemen because they're not elite. Oh, they are elite. Excuse me. Okay, so that's why they're doing so well. Still, though, the Wonder's on fire. The Axemen will go down. And red is a 64 pop. This game is over. Like, when people started telling me to fast forward, I I'm still thinking, like, red is being awfully casual about the situation when he had the lead. And blue has now raided the gold as well. It's 38 villagers for red. He's dead. Castle wall into GG. Now, uh, again, you know, Rams with no support, especially Axemen. Axemen do a lot of damage. Maybe he didn't know that. That's not going to do anything. But this is getting to a point where you could just use Hussars to kill the castles. Five castles on the field here and a wonder for red. It feels like a really weird, you know, bar joke, you know? Five castles and a wonder walked into Arabia. And they said, where on earth was the army this game? Do you think Red thinks he's lost it right now? Like, in this very moment. I think he does. I think he does. I mean, he's been repairing his TCs. He's very frantic at this point, right? Lots of areas to respond to. The amount of blue that continues to pop up into his base is just getting higher. What's funny is, if this would have Relic and Wonder Victory, he could have won with Wonder and Relic Victory by now. He actually has all five Relics. Granted, blue would have taken out the Monasteries, most likely. Oh my goodness. Which player deserves to win? It is going to be the Codfather. Here you go. You've got some Rams over here. That makes sense. 
I like to see, like, I'm not a fan of going in with one ram. That's what we call a trickle. But that's why he also has 14 in queue. So, makes sense. Um, yeah, he'll eventually take these castles then. And then he could surround from this side. Red doesn't want to admit it. Red cannot believe. He thought he had this game won. Overconfident. Played so well. I, I, I just cannot believe it. Cannot believe it. As he's making a new TC, he's like, oh god, we've lost Vils. We need more Vils. But he has no control. He's adding a new TC. Again, he's trying to reboom. Now, don't tell me that blue is going to allow red to reboom. Like, red allowed blue to reboom. Is that possible here? I don't think so. Actually, there's something very satisfying about watching wonders go down. So watch this. We rarely see this. Yo, that was so cool. You know what I can't believe? I can't believe we played Standard Age of Empires where there was no destruction animations on castles. It would just go from, like, full castle, or wonder in this case, I guess, to just square of rubble. <laughs> it's just like, that was normal for us. Okay, another siege workshop. He's getting siege ram now. He's gonna chop some wood here in the middle. And, uh, well, with siege ramp, these castles will eventually go down. Again, he trickled in the rams. Didn't have siege ramp. I actually forgot the poles had siege ramp, to be honest. So well played to him for that. And uh, now blue's just like, where's red? So if you want to research spies, it is 200 gold for every villager the opponent has. So right now it feels like spies is a little too expensive. But in a bit, blue might be able to afford spies, which means he'll be able to see everything. And blue's still trying. Look, he's sending it over army. I meant to say red. Um, he sent villagers to repair that. But it's too little and it's too late. Oh my god, Codfather says. Did you see that? It got blocked off by his market abuse. I need to... What a miss story. How you did not kill me. Oh boy. Woo, I'm not sure about saying that one, buddy. Red might not be too pleased to see that. I mean, that's not rude, right? It's not like, what a noob. How could you not kill me? But it leads to Red resigning. Oh, jeez. What a miss story. Ooh, boy. It all depends on the player, right? It all depends on the player. Like, if Blue says, if Red says, GG, what a crazy game. And then Codfather responds with, what a mystery you did not kill me. That's that's fine. It's a conversation. I think it's a little much when you know you've won the game to say that. But I also don't think that it was meant in a super rude way, right? It's just that if Red is a little stressy stress right now, he might, uh, he might not appreciate that too much. But honestly, like, tell me right now, did Red deserve to win this game? No. You could also make an argument that Blue didn't deserve this game. We've been over this. I I felt like both players kind of just froze up in the middle there. It's Loey the Legends. They just... There's mental hang-ups. There's, there's mistakes. There's things they miss. There's overconfidence. There's lack of confidence. There's, there's throws. There's big plays. There's towers on farms when you're in the Imperial Age. There's a lot of crazy stuff. Um, I just think Red got overconfident. And the the wonder was a flex, and he just he just thought there's no way I lose. I guess um, you look at it now, and you can see what the problem was for Red, which is crazy because in feudal age he did such a good job with it, but like massive issues with economy in the later stages of the game. Uh, he got four thousand gold from relics. Blue was almost defeated, and Blue still had a very similar gold count in terms of gold collected. Um, a lot more food, a lot more wood for Codfather, and that's mainly what he needed. He didn't have to spend a lot of gold in this Cavalier with that tech. There's the KD for you. Um, I'm trying to use the new updated capture age. I kind of want to see their total population here. Bear with me. I'm still getting used to this update. Um, is this a society? Yeah, I guess this shows it, right? Like, you can see how big the lead was at this point with villagers. Now, is that, is that 40 villager lead? Is that what that is? I don't even know. Is that the villager amount? I forget. I'm sorry. The game was so long. And this da this is way too much data thrown at simple-minded T90. But holy crap, man. Holy crap. Blue, 
Might not have looked like it, but he was a little faster throughout that game. Um, and Red, he all he had dominated at the start with the scout rush. He chose not to finish it off in a standard manner. He chose the double castle. All that was fine, but then he kind of lollygagged around. I think, and this is a um, this is a big point, and I don't know what part of the game it was. Um, wasn't here. It was ages ago. One sec. Um, okay, so like right after this, right after this, right after this, still think right after this. Okay, this moment right here. Hey, look what Red can see. This is actually, I mean, I know Blue, great job for the comeback and everything, but Blue is actually really fortunate with this. I think if these Axemen, instead of choosing the South, choose the North, Blue is 100% dead. Would you guys agree with me? At this point, you have Red and Imp. You have Blue and Castle Age. Red chose to go to the South to see where he expanded to. And I think just assumed, like, ah, okay, he doesn't have much. And then eventually, he found this. And this was super innocent looking. So he found nothing in the South. He then found these villagers. They weren't talking to each other at all. So he's like, oh, all he had was a bunch of lumberjacks in the houses. If Red would have looked to the north, despite how chill he played this, he still destroys Blue. But how we got from this position to eventually the, the end point of the game is just incredible. And only possible in Low Evil Legends. <laughs> I, I fully understand it, but I had people asking me to fast forward because we do the live games here. They're like, nah, this, this game's over. Thank God we didn't. I just had a feeling, man. I've seen enough games thrown... I didn't think it would be quite like that, but woo. So what's the title on that one? The game that no one deserves to win? Is that too mean? I hope that doesn't come off as too mean. <laughs> it just felt like both players were just, just squandering opportunities, man. <laughs> like polls. Maybe he doesn't know the pull up the, the poll um Maybe he doesn't know the poll bonuses, to be fair. But not farming around the full works. Also not having a farm upgrade, which just works against all your Civs bonuses. <laughs> not making many stables for so long works against your Civs bonuses. Um, red, like, Wonder, Paladin, Axeman, Castle Wall. Like, <laughs> like, if he didn't have three castles in a line and he had extra castles next to his Wonder and his, his Town Centers, he would have had better chances. Because every move, man, was just like giving the other an opportunity. It was like this crazy back and forth tennis match. But instead of hitting the ball back and forth with the rackets, they were hitting it into each other's faces. Ay, 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 ay. ay. Whew. Don't forget five relics, too. I know. It was ridiculous. On paper, on paper, you cannot make that game up. That one player built a wonder and had all five relics and lost the game. That's just insane. Um, well, GG.